catastrophic disaster, human conflict, nuclear bombs, natural disasters, chemical and biological warfare. Without warning, the world as we know it can come to an end. 22 days ago, a group of volunteers entered a 10-week experiment to see if they can survive and rebuild after a simulated viral outbreak leaves Los Angeles and the rest of the planet devastated. Their new home, a cordoned off 80,000 square foot warehouse near downtown Los Angeles. They started with no electricity, no water, Nothing. And no communication with the outside world. They're not broadcasting, they're just transmitting. As part of the experiment, an outside gang of looters and thugs challenged the colonists' resources and security. So far, the volunteers have built the survival basics. There you go. And after an attack to steal their resources, <laughs> they assembled an arsenal of weapons. Now, I'm looking at five. A quest for solar energy and a fight for survival. As day 23 begins, the colonists are still struggling to make a normal life for themselves. I am not happy in this warehouse. In the end, our team has one main goal, and that is to get the hell out of here. Acquiring food and supplies after a disaster can be difficult. Eventually, you'll want to leave the city and go to a place that has more sustainable resources. With their supplies diminishing, the volunteers have set their sights on leaving the bleak urban environment of the colony by fixing a broken down flatbed truck. As part of the experiment, the volunteers must survive and rebuild using the limited resources on hand. But later in the experiment, they'll be given details of a possible escape route. Last week, they took their first step toward life beyond the colony by getting the truck's engine up and running. It runs! Furs like a kitten. Now, the colonists need to figure out the rest of the plan for their escape vehicle. What do we need on this to really get out of here? Think of this as our exodus vehicle, right? It's got to look scary, and it's got to be able to take somebody out if you really need to. What kind of weaponry can we have? I mean, one thought I had is an air cannon and or a flamethrower. Yeah, what you got, Olani? Even if we had something protruding out, kind of like spears like on a pole, if we could sharpen something out. Ooh. Along here, we all got to be able to sit. Like, we, we could go several miles without running into people. So I was just looking at the simple you know, wooden benches that we can all sit on that open up like on a sailboat. We can store all of our food oh, on that it. That sounds great. We have to watch our clearance on this. We're dealing with a 13-foot truck. So I'm thinking taking that shell off and then working the plankings. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. It's work. All right. work. The idea is if we pull this, the weight of this thing is going to pull it down and snap it off, and we'll be free and clear of this back. Oh, it took out the drill. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. go. <laughs> With the back removed, it's time to clear the busted planks from the deck which means it's time to crank up their new generator. Four days ago, the colonists bartered for it and five gallons of gasoline from a band of traders. The new Jenny should put out four times the juice of their old one, a jury-rigged model Mike made from a pressure washer engine and two car alternators. With the new generator, the colonists should finally be able to crank up their arc welder, a necessity for working on the escape vehicle. Jenny. 
In the shop, Mike tries to figure out what's wrong with the new generator. I had current through there. So that meter shows that we have some electricity flowing, but not enough, not the right one. It's not, it's not doing it right. It should be steady, and it's not steady. It's jumping up and down. Something is seriously wrong. Right now, this is a dead deal. Joe the trader screwed us. We gave him two good machines for a junk machine. In a catastrophe, small generators and batteries are a temporary solution for power. But eventually, you'll need something more sustainable for the long term. Until they can fix the new generator, it's back to the old one. But that means no welding. It's not a Jenny. It's an alternator. It's a car alternator. It was only meant to charge a battery. It'll get us power. won't get us welding power. I would give... My left you-know-what for a couple of solar panels. I'm so sick of this. I think I mentioned that I saw solar panels. Where? Joey remembers seeing solar panels in two places. On the roof of a nearby abandoned building and on his walk to the colony 22 days ago. Hey. I'm looking at where, where, five. Where, 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 where? where? About uh, one o'clock. Those have to be solar panels, I think. They're worth a look. To duplicate the generator, we're going to need about eight panels, just just to keep the batteries charged up so we can use power tools here and there. Maybe if you want to go check what we saw on the roof with binoculars with a few people, right. I'll take a few people to where I think I remember seeing them. Let's organize our little raiding parties and get going. Okay, right. Right. Hey, go, go. Thanks. Michael is really getting everyone involved and, and um, everyone recognizes the importance of having an alternative source of, of energy and us being situated here in, in, in Los Angeles. Um, there's no better place to tap into the seemingly never-ending energy from the sun. Sure All right, lock up. The colonists have encountered thugs and thieves on the streets outside the colony. Not knowing what lies ahead, they proceed with caution. The building where Mike saw the panels and the freight yard from day one have both been cordoned off as part of the experiment. Joey will lead his team to the yard. While Mike takes a crew to break into the building, Anyone lives here? I don't know. Steel frame door. Let's see if I still got the skills. Yeah. There we go. That was it? That was it? Hang on. I think I got it. Yeah. There. Woohoo! Anything spooky out there? Solar panels. Those are the ones? Wow. Solar panels are used to power warning lights on railways and highways. They don't need to be attached to the electricity grid, and they last for years. In fact, that's exactly what we need on the bottom. We need to take this whole thing, okay? All right, let's roll out of here fast. Come on. Wait. You good? Yeah. Meanwhile, Mike and his team have the more difficult task of disassembling a permanent installation on the roof. Now i got to put all the screws back in here. I unscrewed my end over here. After a disaster, Scavenging and stealing may actually become a way of life. And the people who would ordinarily never steal are out there taking things. The panels weigh about 20 pounds each, and these colonists have netted 14 of them. John V scavenges materials for a makeshift litter that will carry the load. We got solar panels and you know all the energy we can use pretty much during the daytime, but now we uh, just got to set it up. All right, there. Push it down now. You guys up up? Come on in, you guys. Look what we got. Okay, just push it. Keep on pushing it now. There we go. Way to go, guys. How many did we get? 14. We got 14. Oh, damn. What are those, 75s? 75, so do the we math. Got four That's... 75s over there. So we got two kilowatts almost. All told, the colonists net 18 75-watt solar panels, enough to keep their batteries charged indefinitely. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. First of all, let me tell you what a solar panel does and how it's made. These are very fragile. The toughest part is the glass. You can't scratch it, but you can break it. Let's say this solar panel had two of these cells missing. It would put out maybe 10 watts instead of 75.